Hi, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University. I'm going to show you how to check your pilot test results using SPSS and Syntax. Before you even get into that analysis phase, you really start with in the build of your Qualtrics instrument. So in this particular example that I'm gonna work with today, I have an experiment that has four different treatments or a control. And so participants will be randomly assigned in the flow to one of these five cells. Now the only way I can tell these cells apart when the Qualtrics gives me the SPSS download is if I have a timer in here. If I don't have a timer, then Qualtrics will not mark in the data set which cell or which group people were assigned to. And I'll have no way to know. So you have to make sure that each of your experimental cell blocks has a timer. And you can see here, we have the timer set up. This is a pretty long one for 75 seconds. Um, they're not gonna show the timer, so it's not gonna be seen by the participants and it's going to delay that submit button. So when I'm ready to do my download, I am going to go to data and analysis within this Qualtrics project, and then I am going to export this uh, SPSS data set. And so in the export, and my internet is taking, of course, a hot minute to do this, in the export, um, you can go with all of the default settings here. I'm at export and import. I'm going to click export. I'm gonna go over to SPSS and then just go ahead and press download. When you download, it's going to get you a file in SPSS. This is the variable view of the file and this is the data view of the file. Now, if I did not have a timer in here, then I would not have any indication of which cell people were in. And so what this shows me here on the screen is that this particular person, person number three, was in this cell, this uh, Twitter unit cell. I can see that person number two on line two here was in the TikTok unit cell. And so if I don't have a timer, there are not gonna be these variables and I won't be able to know which cell someone was in. So right now, Qualtrics has given me an SPSS download where all of the five cells are in different variables. I need to consolidate them into a single variable called cell. And so I actually wrote some syntax for this and I basically say if there is any kind of data in the variable that is named, in this case, cell TW unit timer page submit, then I want you to call it cell one. So that's where I can see over here, cell TW unit uh, page submit, page submit's probably the last one, this one right here. I see that there's data in this one and that means that this person was assigned to this cell. And so I went through my syntax and I did this for all of the unique timers. And so I'm just using this code to consolidate the five different groupings, uh, the four manipulations plus control into a single variable called cell. Then I am giving uh, a label and value labels to this brand new variable that I've created. And I'm actually going to run uh, cross tab chi-square tests to be able to see if people who were in each of these cells understood what they got. So I have all of this code written and I only have one SPSS file open right now. So I can just highlight the code and I can press the green arrow to apply it. It's going to apply it to the open file for SPSS. When I go back into the SPSS file, if I go all the way down to the end, you can see I have a brand new variable called cell and it has all of those uh, definitions that I had set up in the syntax are appearing here. So back to the output that it created in this pop-up box, 
Um, here is the syntax written in. I don't have a lot in here right now, so it's not really gonna tell me anything indicative. However, I do know that as I look at a table like this, that people who were in the Twitter, Twitter unit post cell should have said that they saw a Twitter post as opposed to a TikTok post. So in this particular case, we see that somebody who was in the TikTok group actually said that they saw a TikTok post. So that's an indication. If you see this happening over and over um, and majority of the time, that's an indication that this particular um, manipulation is not working. Uh, and in TikTok, finally they understood that yes, they were watching TikTok. The people were in TikTok again, that's great. And then this person was in control and he basically thought he saw a Twitter post. He didn't see anything. Um, so this is the chi-square results. Of course, there's only a few, uh, there's only five cases in this little data set, and so you're not gonna get statistical significance. And you see here, the statistical significance is poor, and so we would reject this anyway, but uh, that's really because there's only an N of five in here. So the next manipulation check wanted to know um, who the person was that wrote the post. So this was the, um, group that was, this was the cell, that was the Twitter unit. Um, and then people responded that it was an official military unit. Somebody got this one. Um, oh, nobody was, yeah, somebody got this one wrong. And then they said it was a military service member. So even though it was a unit post, they incorrectly identified it as a service member. So people are, are not paying attention in this particular case. Again, we go down and look at the SIG, and it's a poor SIG here, but it's really because there's not any data. This is not real data in this particular data set. So when you get up to about maybe 10 cases, 15 cases um, or more per experimental cell, that's when you're at the point when you can start to really see trends as to whether your manipulation is working. And essentially you wanna see if um, based on the cell that people were in, and in this case, this is a cell, this is a cell, this is a cell, and this is a cell, if people are answering the question correctly for the cell that they were in. And that's how you use syntax to do your uh, pilot test manipulation check testing. Happy researching.